Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to National University Week, brought to you by Career Map Media Group. My name, for those of you who haven't seen me just yet, is Heather. I'm from Career Map. And for this afternoon's session, I'm joined by Hannah and hello Hannah uh, and a team of student ambassadors from the University of Sunderland. So the team are here to tell you all about life and study at Sunderland uh, and the ambassadors are absolutely on hand to answer any of your questions from the perspective of a college student. Um, so before I hand over to Hannah, I'll just do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, for those of you who haven't been to one of these sessions before, I think it's always good to know that the session is being recorded. You will get uh, an email with the link of the recording, so you don't need to worry about missing out on anything however if you want to kind of keep anything for the the immediate like here and now just take a screenshot of your screen if you need anything now and um, also please ask any questions in the chat box and we can put them to the team in a Q&A towards the end of the session um, but really that's about it it's time for me to hand over to Hannah and I'll see you for the Q&A Thanks for that, Heather. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name's Hannah and I am the Student Recruitment Coordinator for the Out of Region sector here at the University of Sunderland. Um, and today I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what it says on the tin. So Discover Sunderland, um, our city. So like Heather said, a little bit about what courses we have to offer, student life, things like that. Um, and also what the city has to offer as well, because I feel like not many people really know about City of Sunderland and what we've got going on here. Um, so I am going to turn my camera off while I'm presenting and um, but I will be back at the end. So at the moment it's a great time to study at the University of Sunderland and um, for both the university and the city are on a really big upward trajectory and um, huge investments are being made in the city and at the uni and um, so there's never really been a better time to consider Sunderland as one of your choices. Um, as you can see on the slide, we're also a top 50 UK university for two years running now, according to the Guardian University Guide, um, which is obviously great. It, it means that we're getting um, the attention we deserve. And as you can see on the right hand side of the slide, this is a QR code and um, you can register for further information. If you do want to scan that, um, it will take you to a form and it'll let you fill that out with your details. And if you want to receive any information about events we've got coming up now or in the future, um, you can register using that as well. So I'll leave that on for a couple of seconds. Yep, so we're now just going to play a short video just to sum up what the University of Sunderland's kind of all about. Um, so, Heather, if you could play video one. Yep, yeah, sure, I'll play it now. Just a reminder um, to pop the mic off. Where shall we begin? I'll just replay that because it seemed to just um, stall. So just let me play again. Where shall we begin? The end seems pretty logical, right? With the doctors, the nurses, the engineers, the designers, teachers, scientists, lawyers, social workers, psychologists, accountants, writers. You get the idea. The huge number of people who've walked through our doors and gone on to become something exceptional who are defining their own path have become leading names in their field who are breaking down barriers and inspiring others ah this guy's not doing too bad for himself either yes we're proud proud of our career focused courses proud of our top quality facilities proud of our inclusive welcoming culture and we're proud of our vibrant bustling switched on independent ever-changing city Oh, and did we mention the beaches? But truth be told, our greatest achievements, what we're most proud of, simple, we're most proud of you, of where you go after us, of what you do after you're done here. Because that's the point, isn't it? That's what this is all about. The reason you come here is to go somewhere. And the reason we're here is to get you there. 
together from day one. Think course, think career, think Sunderland. Okie dokie. So I hope that's gave you a little bit of an insight into the University of Sunderland. Um, we will go into a little bit more detail now. Um, so you may not know this, but we are actually a global institution. Um, although Sunderland is obviously our main campus, we also have a campus in Canary Wharf in London and even overseas in Hong Kong as well. Um, we have continued to expand internationally through partnering with other institutions worldwide. And as you can see, we are hugely represented across the majority of countries within our institutions. And um, depending on your course, this can also mean that you might be able to choose to study abroad at one of our partners during your degree for a period of time as well. Now, moving on to our courses, um, you can use the QR codes in the bottom of the corner to um, view the various topics throughout as well, if you do want to have a little look yourself in your own time. Um, we do offer a plethora of courses here at the university. We are currently split into five faculties. As you can see, Health Sciences and Wellbeing is by far the largest faculty we have here. Um, but I am confident that there's definitely something for everyone here at the University of Sunderland. However, these subjects go even further. For example, within computing, we actually have three different courses. So we have computer science, games development, and cybersecurity and digital forensics. And it's also similar with a lot of other courses on the list, such as psychology. We don't just offer a generic BSc psychology. We do actually offer clinical, forensic, and psychology with counseling as well. A lot of our courses offer an integrated foundation year as well, which is obviously great for students who don't quite meet the necessary grade requirements for the main three year pathway. Or if you do want to um, do the four years, you might not be sure what path you want to go down. So the integrated foundation years are great for this option. And um, another thing is to consider when you're choosing your course can include sandwich years, which majority of our courses do offer a work placement year in between years two and three. So let's move on to our campuses here at Sunderland. So we do have two campuses. As you can see on the screen at the minute, we'll start with our city campus, which is just a five minute walk from the city centre and all of its amenities. This campus is home to our health sciences and wellbeing courses, as well as some of our arts and creative industry courses as well. So let's have a look at the, fa the facilities in more detail. So starting with city space, this is kind of like the central hub on city campus and it could be described as like the main student hangout area. Um, it allows students the opportunity to kind of relax with friends in between lessons and after lessons. Um, and the facilities in here include the sports hall, we've got the climbing wall and there's a student gym as well. And students do receive a generous discounted rate for the student gym. Um, it also houses our largest cafe on this campus, um, which is called the Studio, and you can find a variety of food and drinks available, and that is open to late on nights as well, so you can stay after your lessons and your seminars are finished if you wanted to. Now, we'll have a fantastic range of industry leading facilities available for students here. And these particular images represent some course facilities that we've got. So for things such as paramedic science, biomedical science, and um, we've got medicine and pharmacy on here, just to name a few. And um, one of our main new buildings that we've just um, opened is the anatomy building. And um, this means that students don't have to travel to use these kind of facilities that can get involved in that just on the doorstep. And um, the running theme with all of our health facilities to keep in mind is that they are created to be career focused, meaning that they have been manufactured to reflect a real work and environment for our health students, therefore preparing them for the world after graduation, which is obviously the most important part. Now, moving on to our other faculty that's based here at City Campus. Um, these are our arts and creative industry courses. So you can see a few of them on here. Um, we've got things like graphic design, fine art, um, performing arts are based here, fashion design, plenty more as well. Um, we do appreciate that in our creative courses, it's really important for students to have their own space to express themselves and obviously to create amazing pieces of art and design as well as a space to perform. We have a huge range of facilities for these courses that allow our students to do this. One of them most one of the most impressive being our fine art students are able to have their own studio. Um, 
particularly in third year, we really do want to make sure that no matter what course our students are given the time and resources to succeed. And obviously students being able to have their own spaces to be creative is just an example of this. Now on to our second campus here at the University of Sunderland. Um, this is our St Peter's campus. Um, it's situated right on the riverside, as you can see on the image on the screen, and it's actually only minutes away from the beach. This campus is home to all of our other courses, some including technology, education, business, law, tourism, and the remainder of our art and design courses. The university are actually currently investing over a hundred million pounds to redevelop this campus. So there's a lot of money going into it. And this is going towards creating things such as a new library, study spaces for students, and it'll also be going towards improving STEM subjects and equipment as well. Now, if we delve a bit further into some of the facilities on this campus, you can see the rest of the arts and creative industries facilities that we've got going on here. And um, some of the images include some of our state of the art TV studios, which many of our media courses dabble in. We even have the same technology that Disney used to create the Mandalorian series. So as you can imagine, it's very expensive equipment. And um, you can also see our cinema here. Um, yes, we do have a cinema on site, which can hold around 250 people. So you may have have larger lectures in here or you can also get involved in our cine club as well it's currently undergoing a huge refurbishment which will hopefully be ready for those starting in September the university is also incredibly proud to own the National Glass Centre, which you might have heard of, you might not of, um, which houses our glass and ceramics course. Now, you don't have to be doing a glass and ceramics course to get involved in this centre. Um, as you can see in the bottom middle image, they're currently doing some glass blowing on there. However, they do run glass blowing workshops and pottery making opportunities, which absolutely anyone can get involved in. You don't have to be studying that course. Now, moving on to a couple of our other buildings on campus, we'll have our Reg Vardy Centre and the David Goldman Technology Centre as well. So within these, we have some amazing facilities again. For example, our fully legal mock law court, um, which you can see in the bottom middle picture there, um, where our students, our law students, sorry, often partake in courtroom battles. We also have a law clinic in this building where our third year law students get the opportunity to work on real life live cases before they've even fully qualified, which is definitely something to consider if you were looking at doing a law degree. Now, our David Goldman Centre is home to our computing and engineering courses. Now, you can see some of the facilities here, such as our brand new VR gaming labs and our 365 degree igloo, which creates an immersive experience for students to work in. Now, moving on to accommodation, so obviously while you study with us, you will need a place to call your home. Um, luckily, we have a number of accommodation options for you to choose from. As you can see, Pans Bank and Scotia Key on the screen here, they are both situated on the riverside and each site has various things included in their weekly costs with accommodations to suit everyone's budget. Both sites are within walking distance to both campuses. However, there is also a free university bus which can transport you to and from the accommodation, which is obviously great and all for days in the winter where it's absolutely hiding it down with rain. Now, another investment the University of Sunderland is making within, is within accommodation. We will have a brand new, newly refurbished site, the precinct available for those who are starting studying with us in September. This accommodation is literally a five minute walk from the city campus. And again, it will be accessible by, via the free accommodation bus. This investment is a result of the demand for accommodation rising, which certainly suggests that the University of Sunderland is on the up. You can also use the QR code in the bottom of the screen to have a look at more information on specific prices and things like that per week. Now, after all the studying, it's important that you'll need to remember to have a work-life balance. So as you can see on the screen, we've got a variety. These are just a handful, essentially, of some of the course, um, not courses, sorry, some of the clubs and societies that we offer here at the University of Sunderland. Now, the place to go for all things social is the Students' Union. As you can see, we've got a huge range of activities for you to get involved in, but it's not all about sports. There's a real sense of community spirit here at the Students' Union and a great chance to meet people outside of your accommodation and course that share the same interests 
why not try something new or you could even reintroduce something that you've let fall by the wayside whilst you've been doing your studies at sixth form or college you may even want to bring something new to the community that no one's tried before and as such you can create a new society so they're always looking for people with different interests to create these new societies the students union really listen to your voice through feedback from your student elected representatives and maybe this is something you might want to be elected for as well and the qr code on this screen does just take you to the students union page if you do want to have a look at the other um societies that we've got on offer as well Now on this page, you can just see some of our awards that we've recently been granted. Um, obviously the top 50 university, which was there at the beginning. Um, however, most recently we have been named as a top 10 university in the UK for social inclusion, which we are really proud of. Um, Sunderland really does pride itself on being an inclusive place for everyone to thrive in, no matter where you've come from, how far you've traveled to be here. That's something that we really do pride ourselves on is making everybody feel welcome here. And you can also see some of our other course positions, such as journalism courses, actually being fourth in the UK at the moment. Now, moving on to the city, which our university obviously sits in, there are so many ent entertaining things for you to get involved in in the city of Sunderland. And I'm just going to get Heather to play this really short video. I'll do it now for you, just a reminder for Mike's off as well. Perfect, thank you. Yes, it was really short. So as you can see, we've got some various images on this slide, um, such as the established Sunland Empire Theatre, which hosts a huge variety of shows. Um, next year, they're actually hosting Wicked when it comes on tour and Only Fools and Horses, the musical. Um, we also have an outdoor ski slope, which gives you the opportunity to try skiing. You can do snowboarding and various other activities as well on there. Um, and we also have in the top left, the brand new fire station, um, which is another um, entertainment entertainment venue where you can also catch a show however you can also just grab a bite to eat and drink in the restaurant there as well again the qr code at the bottom of these screens will just take us to the pages on our website so you can look at these places in more detail Now, following on again, so we also have the famous Stadium of Light where you can watch the Black Cats play in the Championship League. Um, or alternatively, if football isn't your thing, you can also see on the adjacent picture. Um, it's also used as a concert venue. So we've recently hosted Beyonce on her Renaissance tour and even Elton John on his farewell tour as well. So we do get some really big artists performing here in Sunderland. And a huge entertainment complex is the Stack. Um, this is the picture in the top right now it's made up of shipping containers um, and it's a great place along the seafront to grab a bite to eat and drink and they also offer various entertainments in there so whether you're going for local live music performance they also do quizzes and they also even do crowd karaoke as well so there's definitely something for everybody there and then in the bottom right, you can see our Bridges Shopping Centre, where we host a variety of retail stores in there. And even on a thir on certain Thursdays, they do actually close the Bridges Shopping Centre and just open it for students as well. Now, there's also some seasonal things to do in the city, as you can imagine. So Sunland is such a responsive city. During the switch of the seasons, it changes its appearance and creates a vibrant place to be 365 days of the year. So in the top left at Mowbray Park in the city centre, it comes alive with the Festival of Light, which has continued to get bigger and better each year. And the Christmas markets in Keel Square, which you can see on the top right, um, they have something for everyone. So whether it's food stalls, drink stalls, and there's even an ice skating rink as well. 
Sunderland also has various things to offer during the spring and summer months. So we host some great events such as triathlons and half marathons. And we also host a huge festival called Cubix Festival. Um, this includes rides, food tents, drink stalls and performances from well-known artists. So Cubix Festival 2023 had the famous Endobes, um, it had the Sugar Babes and Blue performing on the stage as well. And they do also do a rock version of this festival the week later. So if pop isn't really your thing, there's also the rock version that you can go to as well. Now, as previously mentioned, um, Sunderland is an ever-changing city. And to be honest, there's no better time to experience this than at the moment. One example of this is the British Esports Association, um, which is the national body for esports, has announced that it will open a performance and education campus here at Riverside Sunderland, which will nurture the next generation of talent um, as interest and engagement in esports does continue to grow in the UK. Um, it's made a multi-million pound commitment to Sunderland where it will establish this performance campus um, which will provide state-of-the-art equipment, training and investment that will support Sunderland as a city as well. Um, they'll deliver educational and coaching courses for players and all other roles within the esports industry which is great for the University of Sunderland because we have actually as of this year now got a new course which is esports events management um, so this obviously gives those students a great opportunity that they wouldn't have necessarily had before. Now, as well as this fantastic investment, Sunderland Haver plans to build a 10,000 seat capacity arena. Um, the multi-use leisure development will host a will feature a food hall, restaurants, a hotel, and various studios. Um, hopefully together forming a unique destination that should have something for everyone. Now, Sunderland was also once known as the largest shipping town in the world. Um, sadly, we don't make ships anymore on the River Weir. However, something very different is about to come there. Um, Fullwell 73, who are the producers behind James Corden's The Late Late Show and the hugely popular Netflix series Sunderland Till I Die, have teamed up with Kane International to produce plans for an incredibly exciting film studio complex on some of these former shipyard sites. Um, one of these includes the plans for the biggest underwater film studio in the world. Um, so it's really exciting stuff, especially for those who are interested in some of our media courses, for example, um, and our film courses. Now, all of these plans and more mean great things for the people of Sunderland, obviously, including students. Um, it creates huge job opportunities for after you graduate, if you did want to stay in Sunderland, but also for placement opportunities for whilst you study with us. Now, if you would like to come and experience Sunderland for yourself, which I can't express enough how important it is to go no matter what university you apply for you need to go and visit the campuses if you can see the facilities in person the pictures really don't do them justice particularly for us at Sunderland and um, it's really important to go there for yourself and get a feel and a vibe for the place and um, so if you do want to do this you can do so by registering for one of our open days which you can see on the screen now and um, or alternatively if you can't make these dates you can book an individual campus tour as well via the website and using the QR code at the bottom of the page Alternatively, there's also virtual tours. If you are unable to make it on campus for an open day or tour, you can use the QR code for more information about these as well. I'll leave that on there for a couple of seconds. Right, and just before I pass on to Heather and our ambassadors for some questions, um, if you would like to order one of our prospectuses, you can do so via the QR code on the left-hand side of the page. If you haven't already registered your interest at the beginning of the session or you've joined late, you can do this via the QR code on the right-hand side of the page. And finally, if you have any questions specific about the University of Sunderland that you would prefer to ask us directly about, um, you can use the email address at the bottom, which is is UK wide student recruitment at sunderland.ac.uk. Um, thank you for listening, and I hope you've learned a lot about the University of Sunderland and the city. And perhaps it has made you think about your university options a little bit more. Um, and I'll pass over to Heather now. Yeah, thank you. I don't know about you guys looking to study there. I think I want to come and live there. 
<laughs> it looks so good. Um, right then, so before we um, bring the ambassadors in, Hannah, I just need to ask you whether there's any chance that you have got the URL for where that QR code goes, just because there's been a couple of comments to say that people are on the phone or they, they can't do the QR code. Can we ping it in the chat at all? Yeah, is that for the register your interest one? It was the one that was on like the first yeah. page. Yes, I'll find that now and I'll pop it in the chat. Wonderful. Um, there's a lot of questions and they're gonna be applicable to you, Hannah, plus the ambassadors, but I think it'd be really good now if we could get the ambassadors um, on screen and if everybody could just um, introduce themselves so kind of who they are and what they're studying would be perfect hello um, right then so I, I think we see everybody across in the same order so yeah take it away and let us know who you are and what you're doing uh, Meg do you want to go first yeah, sure. So I'm Meg. I am a third year illustration and design student, and I also did the integrated foundation year. Fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, next, um, Adi. Okay, I'll go next. Uh, my name is Adi. I'm a second year. I'm doing media communication and culture. Fabulous. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Mathaz. I'm a second year pharmacy student. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Right then, so it's been a busy chat um, and I, I'll be honest with you, I've not had a chance to kind of group the questions into topics. So I'm just going to start from the beginning. Um, right then, we asked a good question um, and I think we could spend probably all a, lot, a long time talking about this, but we said any help for international students like me? I guess that's a really open-ended question, but is there anything that we can talk about from an international student's perspective? Uh, do you mind if I take that one? Go for it. <laughs> okay, so uh, Wei, I know I might be pronouncing the name wrong. Um, I'm an international student. I've been here for a little over a year now. Uh, getting here was a little scary at first, but there is a lot of help. You know, uh, my first day here, I ran into a uh, an ambassador. There's this program called Student Ambassadors, and there's this great guy there that helped me a lot. There's also things like international support. There's a lot of uh, activities for students who are coming from far away and might not know a lot of things. Uh, I can go on and on about all the support they have for you here in the university, but I guess when you get here, or if you get here, you probably be able to experience it too. Brilliant. That is a wonderful answer. Thank you. Um, right then, so next question. I think maybe Hannah, this is for you. Emma said, what are the graduate outcomes like at the uni? Yeah, so um, we've got some great um, graduate stories actually, um, which you can find on the website in more detail. But so a lot of people tend to go off and do things that were based on their course or if you find that perhaps like your course is a bit generic we do and you're struggling to find employment we do actually have an employability team and um, they will help you find graduate internships and um, full-time work once you've graduated and um, for up to three years after you graduate so you can sign up for the emails or you can sign up for one-to-one -one sessions um, and they also help you find um, part-time work during your degree as well and um, so we've got a various different amount of outcomes I mean I studied at the University of Sunderland um, and I did English literature and um, and now I'm here as a student recruitment coordinator. So there's various different things that you can get involved in. Um, but there's always that team that will be able to help you make those decisions as well. So you're not on your own. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and probably, again, Hannah, another one for you. But Tim Fell said, which are the most competitive courses? OK, so... Um, Medicine is obviously incredibly competitive as it is everywhere in the UK. Um, so that is definitely the most competitive. Um, paramedic science is pretty competitive. If I'm going to be honest, it is predominantly the health courses that are competitive. Um, midwifery is pretty much brand new. We've only had, I think this is the second year of midwifery. Um, so there's only that is incredibly competitive because it's a very small cohort at the moment so it's things like that so paramedic science medicine midwifery um pharmacy is pretty competitive so those kind of courses um we don't actually have many capped courses as such other than the health courses 
Right, okay. And that's a really nice segue to my next question. And um, I don't know how much detail you'd know on this, but anything that you can share would be great. Mia said, what's digital forensics? It sounds interesting. And it does. Okay. <laughs> so it's essentially just, it's a different pathway yet that you can take instead of doing a computer science degree. So it's classed as cyber security and digital forensics. Um, it's a three year course um, which sits within that faculty um, of computer science. You do get a placement option within that year, in between, within that course, within years two and three. Um, and it's as far as I'm aware, I didn't do it, but I'm pretty sure that it's just um, learning about so, the sort of cyber security things and digital forensics in more detail. But you do all it is important to know you do also do some generic computer science stuff as well. It's it's not all um, like totally specified to that you do also do some generic computer science stuff and things like that so you will learn a little bit of everything and um, however there is a course page about it on the website i can put the link in the chat which will tell you a little bit more detail yeah if you could too that would be great because um my next question i think is probably best suited to mag and this is the question about the integrated foundation um if you could so mikey said what is the integrated foundation and ask, does it let you do different degrees until you confirm the one that you want to do? Meg, you've done this, haven't you? Can you clarify? Yeah, so I did my um, integrated foundation year in arts and design because I wasn't sure whether I wanted to go into fine art or in illustration. And what it is, is you get um, the chance to explore all those different areas um, through different modules. So I did a module, I'm trying to remember them all, but this was a few years ago now, um, I was given a module that was based on cosmos versus the universe, chaos versus order, um, one on sustainability, one on art as activism, one on improvisation, and one where our prompt was metamorphosis. And each of these modules was presented by a different um, department from within art and creative industries. So we were essentially taught a small segment from each of the different um, each of the different um, courses that we could do. And we didn't have to do it in their style. So if you were, if you knew that you're either going to go like photography or graphic design, you could do it totally just photography and graphic design and then see which one you liked. But it gives you a chance to sort of see what the teaching style is like in each department, what kind of thing you do in each department and for you to explore um, the areas that you're interested in until you could pick the one where you think, yeah, that's the route for me. I'm really enjoying doing this. So it is very much, um, it, it feels, it, it feels like it's kind of not quite right to say it's generic. It is a very kind of quick, short um, introduction to each of the courses um, within one year. Um, I found it really helpful, um, especially some of the stuff because they don't just do like the arts and stuff. They will also take you through basic maths and English too, which I hadn't done in a long time when I came to uni because I'm a mature student. Um, and that was also really good for me because it taught me the basics of academic writing, which has been really helpful in my course as well. So I, I definitely um, say the foundation yeah, is useful if you're not sure where you want to go in university yet. Brill. And so you've mentioned that you're a mature student. And I would actually say there's been a lot of comments this week from people who are asking how old they can be to come and do an undergraduate degree. So um Meg and I actually don't know whether any of the other guys here are mature students but if you are please kind of raise your hand and tell us your story but Meg how can we ask how old are you and how did you find yourself here so I'm 25 um so mature student makes it sound like it's super old it's not it's just people who don't go to university at like the generic age um I basically um I had a lot of trouble in college because I'm disabled um, so I dropped out of college a couple of times just because they couldn't support me properly. And actually, one of the reasons I chose Sunderland and knew I wanted to come here was because um, of like the wonderful disability team. So I thought university wasn't going to happen for me. Um, but I kind of I knew that I wanted to come here once I knew that there was a chance for me to continue to learn, which I love to do in a place where I'd be supported. So it took me a few years to find where I wanted to be, but it really was just I didn't think it was possible until I found out that I could get supported here. That's so interesting and so insightful. I mean, is there anything else you could tell us about the kind of support that you've you've had and you receive as a disabled student? Yeah, absolutely. So um, 
first of all, when I applied, the um, disability team reached out to me and they said, hi, we've seen you've applied for our university. Would you like to like email or have a phone call with us? We can talk about what kind of um, support we can offer, which was really lovely. Um, not just because they offered to help, but because they offered me a variety of methods to communicate with them, which a lot of people don't do. Um, so I'm autistic and sometimes I struggle when it's just a phone call because I can't see people's faces. I can't process it properly. So that, first of all, was just yes for me. Um, but I have a disability plan that was made just for me. So I talked with the disability team. I talked about some of the things I struggle with. And we worked together to come up with um, accommodations and solutions that are spoke to me that then all of my teachers get. So, for example, one of the accommodations is that I'm allowed to fidget when I'm in class. I'm allowed, I have my fidget ring on, but I crochet, I sit and doodle and nobody says anything because it's just I focus better that way. Um, I also get sent slides and things um, before the class so that I can read through them and process them. And thankfully, Student Finance provided me with a laptop that had some software on that helps me with focusing, reading and writing and taking notes. So I also do get that from Student Finance. And all of it has just been really helpful. Whenever, whenever I've had like a problem or I've had a bit of a down slope, I've been able to go to the wellbeing team and they've provided me with free counselling. Um, and there's also online group sessions for counselling as well, which I found really helpful. Um, I think on the wellbeing side, this university is just everything I could ever wish for. That is amazing to hear. And thank you. Thanks for sharing such detailed information. I think that that that's must be I think that's really reassuring for anybody who's in a similar situation to you who's worried about how they'll be supported or whether they should have the confidence to take the next steps. Hopefully, I think your stories, I, I feel that's quite inspiring. Um, thank you, Meg. Um, right, I'm going to ask a question to everybody, but um uh, Mafaz hasn't spoken yet. So um I'm gonna start with you, Mafaz. And the question is um yeah. what um if somebody's unsure about what degree to do, what advice would you give from your perspective of um, of kind of how to, to form that? And it, have you got potentially like an experience yourself where did you know what you wanted to do and you went down that path or were you in a situation where you were unsure and, and how did you work it? Um, I didn't really know exactly what I want to do and then I just ended up in pharmacy um so I just kind of based it on what I liked and what I enjoyed doing so I know it sounds very very weird and odd but I really really like chemistry and it's just something that has always come really easy to me and I was actually switching between when I was doing my I'm Irish originally so we don't call it A levels we call it the leaving cert when I was doing my leaving cert I was also really good at like history and essay writing and stuff like that so I was switching between chemistry and switching between history and I was like I don't know which one I'd really want to do and it really just boiled down to which one I enjoyed the most like yeah I was good at essay writing but did I really like sitting down and writing essays I didn't really enjoy it as much as sitting down and learning like mechanisms and stuff like that that's just something that personally interested me and then that's why I decided to go to pharmacy. That is a great explanation. And what, how talented to be so good at both. <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh. you. <laughs> um, it's a problem that I wouldn't have. Um, right then. So, um, Aidy, you're able to tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah. Oh, um, I guess I decided to do media and communication. Well, and culture. Uh, I am coming from, I transferred in from the States, Texas. Uh, I guess I wanted a different experience, kind of. And it was also an excuse to travel, which is always nice. Um, picking media and communication and Sunderland, it was, I guess, I did want to come to England. I wasn't sure exactly where I wanted to go to, but then I saw some of the things that they were planning here in the Northeast, which looked pretty amazing. I think they talked a little bit about it in uh, in the presentation that you guys heard earlier concerning like the underwater uh, studio, uh, production studio and other, there are a lot of amazing stuff that are hopefully would be going through in the next few years. So 
uh, all those opportunities that are opening up is also one of the reasons that I picked the course that I'm currently doing. And I do like uh, watching movies and seeing how people like enjoy watching movies, the kind of feel, the kind of things they like to watch and the like. Uh, I researched the university. I saw the program that I was interested in was really good here and the staff looked really good. Well, they look pretty amazing. Even after I met them, they're even more amazing than they are on paper, which is always great to see. So yeah, just as, a, as they said before, just think about what you love, think about something that you're gonna enjoy and stay away from the things you hate. Yeah, that's why I said. I've got to ask you, how have you dealt with the temperature change from Texas to Sunderland? I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Over this, I thought I was gonna spend the summer here, but yeah, no, there was no summer here. I ran away in like July, <laughs> but I did come back in uh, September, <laughs> like middle of September. Yeah. Uh, it's fun. I, mean, I like the. <laughs> the snow is no honestly the snow is great it's nice to have like the beach super close that i i have gone into the water there um snow is great i i like snow i just also like you know the sun and August. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all don't we all um thank you right then meg yes were you you know, tell us a little bit about your journey how you decided what you wanted to do and if you've got any words of advice for somebody who is a little bit unsure so I've always loved to make things, but I never really knew what to do with it. So um, I love to draw, I love to paint, I love to design clothes, I love to make music. Like for a little while I studied um, music performance and I thought that's what I was going to do. Um, but I came upon, basically I came upon illustration because I really enjoyed my foundation here, but I came at art and design because I found that it was something that felt really good to me that I never got bored of, that if I felt like I needed to process something or I had something to say, I could do it through art. And one of the things that was really important to me when I was picking my university was, is this going to be a place that has a standard style where everyone kind of, you can tell which institution they've been to because of the way they draw, or was it someone who was going to let me really focus on being me and allowing me to explore all the areas I want to. So that was how another reason I, checked out Sunderland to begin with was because they don't have a standard style. They'll teach you very practical skills um, and they'll teach you all the fundamentals that you need, but they won't force you to have a certain look to your drawings. You are very much, you can see yourself in your art. Um, but if you're not sure on what to do, I would say, think about what makes you happy. Um, don't be afraid to take a little bit of time to consider this because it's a big decision. It's you know, it's three years of your life that you're going to dedicate to this. Um, so if you're unsure, it probably means that you're very, very sensible and that you are thinking about this seriously. Um, I would also suggest to come to our open days and talk to the lecturers there because the lecturers really know their stuff. They're passionate about their subject and they're not going to be upset if you don't pick their course. They want what's best for you. So honestly, yeah, talk to people about it. I mean, I don't... Um, I'm considering doing a master's degree and I'm not sure between the two master's degrees that I want to do and I went and talked to one of the teachers just yesterday to ask about it knowing full, like that he wouldn't judge me if I didn't want to do his course because that's just kind of the place it is like it's nice here you can just talk to people you can get to know it and they'll really let you pick the decision that's best for you. No it really does feel like the student experience is at the heart of everything from the way that you're talking that's what comes across to me um on the subject of open days hannah there was a question that was popped in let me just find it um harry said do you help with travel costs for the open days yes um i didn't just want to reply in the chat of this because i thought we'd speak about it so we do offer a travel reimbursement scheme and um, so the way that this works is if you are traveling from over 20 miles one way and um, you will be eligible to claim a certain amount of money back it does go up to 100 pound um so whether that's like on the bus on the train um or in the car and um, we you would come the open day um fill out a form at our travel reimbursement stand the staff on the stand will obviously help you fill it out um, and then 
you'll submit we'll submit the form to finance and you'll get paid within i think it's eight weeks at the minute um and as i say that's up to 100 pound i will put the link to the page um in the chat just so you can have a look at the t's and c's just to see exactly how much you'll be eligible to claim and things like that because it does tell you um in there as well I was on mute. That's a brilliant. Thank you. Um, I always I always get caught out at least once. So there we go. Um, right then. Um, another question for the ambassadors, please. Um, Nadira asked, what is the environment like on campus? Um, Aidy, can we go with you first, please? All right. Um, <laughs> the environment is really good. It's very diverse, like campus. It's uh there are a lot of activities going on. I'm part of this uh, friendship evening thing we do on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock where we have games and pizzas for you. And like free drink. I think, I don't think it's me. I think that Ada's no. connection. Yeah, I was thinking it was me, but I don't think no. it is. I think it's Ada's connection. Right, okay. Oh, he's back, I think. Are you, ba are you back? Oh, right, okay. Um, right, I think the best thing to do, because I hope you can hear us, is to go maybe to the FAS next, and we'll come back to Ada, Um, and I'll just pop a note in the chat for him. Um. Mufaz, can you tell us about the environment at, on campus? No. <laughs> no, she can't. Yes. <laughs> right, and you're back. Right. It is okay, back. Hey. Yeah. I think everybody's yeah. got their own connections. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry well, about that. You're all right. Um, yeah, can you start again? Can you just, yeah, can you tell us about the environment and life on campus for you? Okay, uh, so I'm an international student, and uh, well, it's my it was my first time here in the Northeast, so everything was quite new to me, as you can imagine. Um, but even with it, there's quite a bit of things to do on campus. As a student, you still go to school. Uh, there's a lot of like access to different transportation that you can take advantage of as a student. Some of it's free. Um, I do have friends in my class who come from Newcastle and they're also able to make it work. Uh, they have a nightlife here, which if it's your first time in the UK, it can be quite interesting to learn all the habits and ways of things. Like yesterday I spent the night at a, I had a Christmas carol that I went for and it was at a pub, which was a first for me. <laughs> uh, the singing voices were pretty good though, surprisingly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, things like that are scattered all through the year in school. Um, I don't know if you, I'm not sure when I cut off, but we have things, this, there's a student union that organizes so many different kinds of events. Like uh, on Tuesdays, you have the VR night uh, if you're interested in that, it's an excuse to meet people, hang out. Um, there's the movie society that my roommate or my housemate is in. You know, he's always inviting me for different kinds of films that I probably would not have known about if not for him and stuff. Uh, the environment here, it's quite welcoming. I will say that. Uh, I don't feel worried walking around at night, which is always great. Um, I'm never... Like people say hello back to you when you say hello, which is nice. Uh, I don't know if I covered everything, but I feel like I've just been talking for a while, so I'll stop yeah, there. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Mufaz, yes, can you tell us a little bit about what your kind of perception of the environment on campus is? Yeah, um, I feel like you've said a lot. Uh, I don't really have much else to say. It's just very diverse. You'll find like there's so many different types of people and everyone's just really happy to be there. The atmosphere is really nice. And the university offers like 
a lot of support and a lot of there are a lot of activities throughout the year and in our main campus in our not main campus sorry in the city campus there's um like in city space i think it's called there's a like board full of all the stuff that's like going to be going on for the next month it's a part of the su so they have like all the events and any like gatherings or anything that's going to happen for all the societies they always have that up there so there's always like something going on <laughs> like you'll always have something to go to you'll never be bored and everyone's just so nice and friendly brilliant so, yeah <laughs> love it thank you Meg. do you have anything else to add on that um yeah honestly i think that both my fellow students have got like hit the nail on the head like there's always so much to do we have like a lovely atmosphere on campus where um i know that myself and my friends feel safe um i love the su um i'm in free societies because apparently i have all the time in the world um but um it's one of those things like, like you just want to get your hands in and you want to do stuff and Personally, I, I love um, being a, like, I love seeing what other societies are doing and taking part in the activities and stuff. Like the Cozy Crochet Knitting Society did like Halloween crafts and we made crochet pumpkins in October. Um, and I mean, my society were doing this 16 days of activism against gender based violence. That's a feminist society that we're getting, we've been asked for a quote for um, it to be published somewhere. I think I've run an online journal or in the paper, which is very cool. Um, we're doing like a freeway collaboration on Thursday to have an interfaith festive party. So it's just really nice that there's all this inclusive stuff and you're like welcome to join. And it never feels like um, it never feels like you're not wanted. That's that, that's a really lovely kind of ending sentence there. The fact that you feel so welcome and like a warmth from from the, the people of the city as well. So lovely perfect as as always i'm loving these answers um hannah i've got a few kind of university slash course led ones for you um if right. i can just do a couple of quick fire ones um manpreet said do you do degree apprenticeships too or is it just kind of like standard undergrad degrees it's just undergrad at the moment and um, i'm not 100 percent sure if we are planning to do any degree apprenticeships in the near future since they are kind of becoming more and more popular and um, but at the minute no it is just undergrad okay perfect um rich you said does the university specialize in a specific subject no i'm um, not particularly like obviously as you saw like on the courses list like there is more health sciences and well-being courses um but to be honest, like if, if you go on the website and look at the arts and creative industries, there's so many of those as well. Like just because it is art and design, there's so many different courses that sit in, in with that. Um, so no, it, it doesn't really specify in a particular subject. It's it's pretty varied and broad. Real. Okay, perfect. Um, right then, the next question was from Chloe and Chloe said that I might be interested in doing a law degree. Will my lectures have previously practiced as legal professionals in yes. the legal space? Yes. Um, so I think about, I don't know 100% off the top of my head, but I'd say about 90% of them have been lawyers um, and then went into teaching. Um, I'm not a hundred percent if it's all of them, um, but I know that definitely the majority of them have. Um, we have had a few new ones recently, so I, I don't know about those. Um, but otherwise, if they haven't, then they've probably just gone straight through education um, to teach law. Um, but yeah, majority of them have got law experience. Um, I was at a law event the other week and the two um, lecturers who were hosting it, one of them had been like a family lawyer and the other one had been like a barrister. She was well high up in the law world and um, but should change our mind and decided to go into teaching so yeah they do have real life experience if that's what you're looking for brilliant perfect um we always get asked lots of questions about employability and support as an alumni as well and um mikey asked a question he said do the degrees also help you to to gain the skills needed for work and not just the academic side of things. Yeah, so um, as I was saying during the presentation about like the health sciences and wellbeing degrees and like 
um, things like computing degrees and education degrees and um, all of our facilities and all of the teaching is based around like how it's going to get you further once you graduate and um, so all of the facilities are based so like for example pharmacy students mafas will be able to say but like they work in like dispensaries which is exactly the same setup as what you'd work in if you were an actual pharmacist and um, so that's kind of how they do that so they incorporate the academic side but in a kind of graduate environment so that you'll yeah. be able to have those skills ready for when you leave um, and there is as i say also the kind of um other teams so lecturers obviously will be available to talk to you you'll have a personal tutor who you can speak to about kind of employability and obviously the employability team as well but yeah it, it is not it's not just academic um you do gain those further skills based on yeah. the environment that you get put in I love those like real world, like like you said, like going into Set almost up, yeah. yeah. Um, fantastic. Right. So I've got a question now and it's about um the how expensive Sunderland is to live in. And what I'm gonna do is Hannah, I'm gonna direct that at you, but then I'm gonna come to the ambassadors to talk about um their experience of managing their budget as a student so it's basically money focused because this crops up a lot about managing finances and the biggest challenges and you know like what tips you would give um so yeah if i can ask you first hannah um how expensive is the city to live in as a student yep so sunland is if we're going off statistics um it's actually the third cheapest city in the uk at the minute um and it's the cheapest city in the north of England so um in terms of affordability obviously I'm not a student anymore and I actually live in a town which is like 15 minutes outside of Sunderland but Sunderland compared to when you go down to London for example or even if you just go to Manchester like you do see such a price difference even in things like in the supermarkets when you go to bars restaurants Um, a big thing that I always mention when we go to UCAS phase is the price of the accommodation so students will often be shocked at how like cheap our accommodation is like the university led ones and even the private ones and um, compared to if you were even to go up the road to Newcastle and um, I think our university owned accommodation start from £87 a week which in comparison to some of our competitors which start at like 120 um for like basic accommodation it's it is really cheap and um, I kind of emphasize enough coming from somebody who lives here <laughs> I know and coming from somebody who lives in Manchester that yeah not... <laughs> <laughs> um right then and so um Meg I would like to start with you then please and and if we can just talk around it's kind of a loose question but um how have you found budgeting as a student and uh, is there any kind of tips that you would give kind of people who are you know, they, they could be coming to study here well, with you in the next year or two. You know, what kind of advice can you give them around the money side of things? Um, so I would say definitely um, apply for our scholarships, apply for our bursaries, because there is so much support available. Um, I'm the recipient of two scholarships, which give me financial aid during my course, which have been absolutely fantastic. Um, and the university has been known for giving out um, cost of living bursaries as well if you're really struggling for money. So always do look out for those, check your university emails because there's always some kind of support that's being offered to you. You just need to look for it and take it. If you don't know where to look, you can always email student support and they will help. Um, I would say when you get your student loan, if you do get a student loan, pay your rent and utilities and any other essential fees first, then you know what you've got to spend. And I would also use the university facilities as much as you can. I can only speak about art and design because those are the facilities I know, but I know that in my building, we have a low cost option of the day when it comes to meals. I know that the room I'm in right now is actually um, a book binding room where I make my own sketchbooks instead of going out and buying them because it's completely free to do that in here and the lecturers and staff actually encourage us to do that instead of spending our money. Um, we have lots of facilities here that you know you're paying your fees so that you can use this stuff so use it make the most of it. Great advice then love the book binding room as well I'm just finding out so much I love it. Um, Mathaz, um, yeah what advice would you give? 
You're on mute. 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 Sorry. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Grand. Um, what I did when I first moved to the university to Sunderland is I get paid monthly. So I would take out my rent and like my utilities and everything when I first get paid and I'd put it either like I'd put it in a bank like a different bank account so I would not touch that. So I would have my money for rent and then I would know what I had to spend for like that month. And so I would separate out my money into like, oh like if I want to go out, that's like I have a few like pounds for that and then like for groceries and for like fun stuff to do let's say so I would try to like budget that way and that has personally really helped me and then just piggybacking off of what Meg said as well like in my building they also have like a low cost option of the day and there's always some form of support being given to students who need it like you just email let's say like your module lead and they'll put you like they'll give you the contact details of the person who you need to contact everyone's really helpful if you are ever struggling so yeah brilliant thank you and I think that the two bank accounts is the trick there that's that's yeah. what you do. yeah just don't touch it it's dealt with yeah and finally um off to you just your final final words on how how are people going to manage their money and what would you suggest that they do uh, I would say start early. Uh, yeah, my coming to Sunderland was kind of late rush rush. So yeah, uh, when you do things kind of late, you do end up spending more money than you otherwise would. So I ended up in a uh, accommodation, especially if you're an international student, you know, accommodations, you're going to be doing everything from uh, far away. So you might want to start early thinking about, okay, where am I going to stay? Uh, maybe even research. Thank God for Google Maps now. You can actually check all right, what's the stores that are nearby where you're staying, how far is it from school, you know? So those kind of things, you might want to check on it before you get into. I guess if you just go to student accommodations like straight away, those are usually like the ones that the university operates. That's usually pretty good because the university is definitely going to keep their accommodations close to the school and close to like places you can shop and stuff. Um, besides that, don't be afraid to ask for student discount. Once you become a student, you get to take advantage of that. And there are a lot of discount apps out there. Uh, I kind of wish I discovered a friend of mine told me about it like a few months after I started here. And I was like, Oh, my God, I missed like three months worth of stuff. Uh, but that's Yeah. That's that. Ask questions. You live uh, and learn, you, don't you? <laughs> you do. You probably would have spent a lot more in that three months had you known about that. <laughs> um, right, brilliant. Well, um, everybody, it's time to wind up the session. And from my perspective, I'm just going to say thank you to everybody who's joined from an audience perspective for all of your really interesting questions. And I hope that you got out of it what you were looking for today. Um, and for um, all of you guys here who've presented today, I think that um, you've it's just been so interesting. You've given so many little details that wouldn't normally come across um, when I think people are researching in certain ways. So. Um, thank you so much um, for your time and, and doing this today. Um, Hannah, I'm just going to say, would you have any kind of final words before we close off the session? Um, yeah, I would just definitely, as the others, and I said in the presentation, have said, like, no matter what choices you pick for when you're applying to university, just try and go and see the places. So obviously, we do offer the travel reimbursement scheme if you do want to come see us. Um, but definitely you need to go and get the vibe for the place and see how it feels. That would be my biggest advice for you to take away from today. Wonderful. Well, thank you, everybody, again. Have a wonderful afternoons and uh, goodbye for now. Yes. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Good afternoon, everybody.